Good boy. Good boy. Hey, everyone. Uh, me and Toby are here to talk to you today about equivalent fractions. Equivalent is another word that means the same. Okay, we'll take these off. Toby doesn't like his glasses. Can you see without them? Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> equivalent, hi, means the same or equal. Um, we know some other words that mean the same thing. We know the word congruent is another word for the same. Congruent means the same. We also know that equation means equal, um, or it's a number sentence with an equal sign. Today we're going to learn about equivalent fractions, and equivalent is just another word for equal. So let's get started. Let's talk about equivalent fractions. We just learned that equivalent means equal or the same. We can remember that because the word equivalent has E-Q-U in it, just like the word equal, E-Q-U, same thing with equation. So they all mean equal or the same. Equivalent fractions name an equal amount. So if we have one whole pizza and we decide to cut it into two pieces, and one person gets to have one half of the two pieces, then that is one half. Uh, we could take the same pizza and we could cut it up into four pieces. But if we shade in two of the four pieces, then that person still is getting half the pizza because it's the same amount as before. We could even take the same pizza and cut it into eight pieces. And if that person decides they are going to get four, one, two, three, four pieces of the pizza, they're still getting one half of the pizza. So one half is the same amount as two fourths, and it's the same amount of as four eighths. Equivalent fractions name an equal amount. This is really important to remember when you are sharing pizza with a friend or friends and you're trying to decide how much to cut it up. Pizza. That was okay. Michael Keaton, right? Okay. Like, like I, have them pizza. I bought a pizza and I want to share it so we can all have some. Yay! 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 Thank okay. you so much. But it's just one big piece right now. They didn't cut it, so let's cut it so we can share. Okay. Yeah, let's split it up. Okay. okay. Um, I just, I want, yeah, I, yeah. I want that one half right here. Right here. Okay, so you can have Wait. one half. So, oh. Wait, yeah, get, that's not. I get one. I need no. I get one half. Needs to no, be. No, 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 no. I'm hungry. That, he can't have all of that and we share that's all of that. That's not fair. Not fair. You know what? Let's cut it into more pieces. <gasps> okay. 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 But I still want one. One half. But we're okay. cutting it into more pieces. He can cut it okay. into more pieces, but he can still have one half. Yeah, because you'll make more pieces, so it'll be fair. Okay. So now we have four pieces of this pizza. <laughs> and go ahead, you can take your one half. Okay. So I'll take my half. Here's my one half. Wait! Wait! Yay! You just you took get one half. You, you just took the same. Half. That's not fair. Yeah, I have one half. You know what? And there's more pieces here. That's not, for that's you. not Wait. fair. I'm hungry. Let's I'm cut right. it into more pieces. Okay. Right, cut it into more pieces. If okay. we cut it into more pieces, it will be it, it'll work out. Okay. okay. Perfect. So we'll as cut long it as I only. Pieces. So then we'll all yeah get more pieces. Yeah, it'll it'll work out. Okay. If we cut it and into you're more still pieces. gonna have one half. And I'll get my half, but okay. it'll work out perfect. Perfectly. All of this pizza looks so good. I can't wait to eat it. Yum. All right, so this time we're all going to share. You're really good at this. I know. We're good at, at cutting it up. Yay, we have eight pieces Woo -hoo! now. Yay. Oh, eight, see, there's eight, eight pieces. pieces. And I love being I'm friends. I'm only going to take this one half. No! And since there's eight pieces, that is so unfair. look, there's more pieces, so it works out. That is not fair. Because I, I just get one half. And there's, there's... But it never changed. And there's four pieces. It never changed. But there's yeah. one, two, three. But it never changed. There's four pieces. But it never... Here. I He's, hate you. you and I just have one, ha one half. That's not fair. You're so even if we cut it up into smaller pieces, one half is always going to be the same. So we can't say that he can you have one half. You tricked us. That's not fair. Fine. 
you caught me. We can split it up differently. I guess I can take apart my half <laughs> into the four pieces, <laughs> and we can split it up. That looks differently. really yummy now. I know. Let's eat. Okay. I don't hate you anymore. <laughs> me neither. I think now you're my friend. Yeah, nice. Yay. You're level five. So now you know that it's important to understand equivalent fractions, so if you are ever sharing a pizza with Mr. Hutch, he can't trick you. So at this point, I want you to flip to the reteaching 11-4 part of your packet, if you're not there already. If you're not, pause the video, get there, and then hit play. Are you back? Okay, we're talking about equivalent fractions, and we know that equivalent is another word for equal. So I'm going to put my equal sign right there. If two fractions name the same amount, they are called equivalent fractions. Anytime you see equivalent fractions, I want you to underline it and put an equal sign to remind you what it means. The directions say, use multiplication to write a fraction equivalent to one half. One way that we can do this is to use multiplication. We can multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. Now, think about an input-output for table for a minute. If we are multiplying, our numbers are going to get bigger, so we draw our up arrow. It's important that we n multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Let me explain why this works. We know something about the identity property, or what we call the one identity property to help us remember. And the identity property says you can multiply any number by one, and you're always going to get that number. So for example, two times one is going to be two. Five times one equals five. Even if we're doing something like 800 times one, it's going to equal 800. If I want to multiply a fraction by 1, I need to have the same number in the numerator and the denominator. So if I multiply this by 2 over 2, that's like saying two shaded pieces out of a total of two pieces. So 2 over 2 is really one whole because I split my pizza into two pieces and I shaded in both of them. So, if I want to have three times as many shaded parts as one half, so you can see here we have two parts, the numerator is one, the shaded part that we're focusing on, out of a total of two equal parts, one half. If I want three times as many, I have to multiply by three over three. And that's the same thing as multiplying by one. So it's going to be the same as one half. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. So now I can have the same amount. Now I have 6 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the number in my denominator. And 3 pieces are shading in for the part that I'm focusing on in my numerator. So even though I have more parts, I can see that I still have the same amount shaded, but they're still equal parts. I can also use division to help me find equivalent fractions. So if I'm trying to write a fraction that's equivalent to 10 over 12, and I'm going to use division, Think of our input-output table again. Division is going to have my number be smaller. So this means that I'm going to have less pieces that I cut the pizza into, but the pieces are actually going to be bigger. Think of a number that is a factor of both 10 and 12. We know factors are the numbers that multiply together. And 2 is a factor of 10 and 12 because 2 times something will get me to 10, and 2 times something will get me to 12. So, if I need to find an equivalent fraction to 10 twelfths, I can divide by 2. Um, I can't just divide by 2 when it's a fraction. I have to divide by 
2 over 2 because that is 1. So if I divide 2 times what gets me to 10, that's 5. 2 times what gets me to 12 is 6. So 10 twelfths and 5 sixths are equivalent fractions, meaning they are equal. Now let's try making some equivalent fractions together. Sometimes you'll get a problem that says find the missing number. Number 1 says 1 fourth equals something over 8. I want you to think about a problem like this, like an input-output table. So I kind of draw my table like this, and we are always asking ourselves from input to output, are the numbers going up or down? Well, 1 to something, we don't know, but 4 to 8, the numbers are going up. When we're dealing with input-output, we know our choices for operation, if our arrow is going up are going to be multiplication or addition. When we're dealing with fractions, it's just a little simpler. It's always going to be multiplication. So, 4 times what gets me to 8? Well, 4 times 2 equals 8. I know to make an equivalent fraction, I need to multiply by 2 over 2, or 1 whole. So, 1 times 2 equals 2, and 4 times 2 equals 8. They already did that for us. So 1 fourth is equivalent to 2 eighths. Look at number 2. 9 twelfths equals something over 4. Think of it like an input-output table. 9 to something, I don't know. But 12 to 4 is going down. So draw an arrow going down. If this were an input-output table, our choices for operation would be subtraction or division. When you're dealing with fractions, it's always going to be division. So we have to figure out how we can divide by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. So 12 divided by what equals 4? Or you can also think 4 times what equals 12. And I know door times tree equals elf 12. So we divided 12 divided by 3 to get 4. That means I need to divide the numerator by 3. So I'm dividing by 3 over 3, or dividing by 1. 9 divided by 3 equals 3. And they already did this part for us. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So I know that 9 twelfths and 3 fourths are equivalent fractions. Look at number 3. 2 thirds equals something over 6. I can see from 3 to 6, my number is going up. So I'll draw an up arrow. That means I'm going to use multiplication. So 2 thirds times what over what will get me to something over 6. 3 times 2 equals 6, so I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2, or 1 whole. 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 2, they did for us, equals 6. So I know that 2 thirds and 4 sixths are equivalent fractions. Number four, four fifths equals something over 10. Um, I can see from five to 10, my number is going up. When I'm dealing with fractions, that means multiplication. Put my multiplication sign, five times what gets me to 10? Five times two. I need to put the same number in my numerator, two. So I'm multiplying by one whole. Four times two equals eight. Five times two equals 10. So I know that four-fifths and eight-tenths are equivalent fractions. The next set of problems says multiply to find an equivalent fraction. Now this makes it easy because I don't have to worry about my arrows. I know that I have to multiply. So here's a trick for you. If you're ever multiplying to find an equivalent fraction, always, always, always multiply by 2 over 2 because it's easy. We can multiply by 2 really quickly. So for 1 fourth, I'm just going to multiply by 2 over 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. 4 times 2 equals 8. I know that 1 fourth is an equivalent fraction to 2 eighths. Number six, one half, same thing. I'm multiplying by two over two. One times two equals two. Two times two equals four. One half is the same as two fourths. I want you to try this for seven and eight. Pause the video while you try it on your own. 
then come back to check your work. You're back too fast. I don't think you tried it on your own. Pause the video, go back, and then you can check. Okay, I'm trusting that you're back now, that you did this on your own, and you're just here to check your work. So for 1 6, if we want an equivalent fraction, we can multiply by 2 over 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. 6 times 2 equals 12. 1 6 is equal to 2 twelfths. 3 fourths times 2 over 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. 4 times 2 equals 8. 3 fourths equals 6 eighths. Good job. I know that I can also divide to find equivalent fractions. Just like when we multiply, the first thing we want to try when we're dividing is to divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. So for 8 over 12, I'm going to see if I can divide by 2 over 2. So 2 times what gets me to 8? Well, 2 times 4 gets me to 8. 2 times what gets me to 12? 2 times 6 equals 12. So I know that 8 twelfths is equivalent to 4 6. So that worked out pretty good for us. Sometimes it won't, though. If I look at number 10, 9 twelfths, and I try to divide by 2 over 2, 2 times what gets me to 9? Well, nothing times 2 is going to get me to 9. It doesn't work. So if you get yourself in this situation, I want you to think about a factor rainbow. So if I'm doing a factor rainbow for 12, I know the first two factors of every number are 1 and that number. What? 1 and that number. Yeah. And the first thing I try after 1 is 2. And I think 2 times what gets me to 12? 2 times 6 gets me to 12. Then I'm going to try the number 3 to see if it works. 3 times what gets me to 12? 3 times 4 gets me to 12. So the I number go. in my denominator over here. Now I'm going to try the number 3. Because it worked for 12, I'm going to see if it will work for 9. So I'm going to change my divided by 2 over 2 to divided by 3 over 3. 3 times what gets me to 9? Well, 3 times 3 gets me to 9. 3 times what gets me to 12? 3 times 4 gets me to 12. So I know that 9 twelfths and 3 fourths are equivalent fractions because I could divide the numerator and the denominator by 3. Let's try number 11, 4 eighths. I am going to divide by 2 first. That's what I always try first because I know it's easy. 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. So 4 eighths is equivalent to 2 fourths. Number 12, 2 6. Always try to divide by 2 over 2 first. 2 divided by 2 equals 1. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. So 2 6 and 1 third are equivalent fractions. All right, try 13, 14, 15, and 16 on your own. Try dividing by 2 first. If that doesn't work, try the next number, starting at 3, 4. See if there's something else you can do. Pause the video, then come back to check your work. Okay, hey again. Checking your work for the last row here. 4 tenths, you can divide by 2 over 2. 2 divided by 4, 2 times what equals 4 is 2. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So 4 tenths and 2 fifths are equivalent fractions. For 5 divided by 10, you can't divide by 2 because 2 times something does not get us to 5. So you have to think of your factor rainbow. Try 3, nothing times 3 gets me to 5. Try 4, nothing times 4 gets me to 5. Try 5, oh, well, 1 times 5 equals 5. So I'm going to do try dividing by 5. 5 divided by 5 equals 1. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. So 5 tenths and 1 half are equivalent fractions. 8 tenths, I'm going to go back to trying, divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So 8 tenths and 4 fifths are equivalent fractions. 
Finally, let's try this last one, 6 eighths. Try dividing by 2 over 2. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 6 eighths and 3 fourths are equivalent fractions. Nice work. Flip to the next page in your packet. Practice 11-4. Pause the video and start it back up when you're there. Okay, I guess you're ready for practice 11-4, equivalent fractions. First set of directions say, find the missing number. This is when we have a blank missing part here, um, like an input-output table. So we can ask, are the numbers going up or down? 2 to 12 is going up, so I know I'm going to need to multiply. So put my multiplication sign here. 2 times what gets me to 12? 2 times 6 gets me to 12. So I need to multiply by 6 over 6. 1 times 6 equals 6. 2 times 6 equals 12. They did that part for me. I know 6 twelfths and 1 half are equivalent fractions. See if you can try it on your own for 2, 3, and 4. Pause the video, then come back to check your work. No, I said pause. Okay, see you soon. Okay, welcome back for number two. Um, 10 to 5 is going down, so you knew you were going to need to divide. So 10 divided by what gets me to 5? Well, 5 times 2 equals 10, so you need to divide by 2 over 2. 2 times 3 equals 6, 2 times 5 equals 10, 6 tenths and 3 fifths are equivalent fractions. For number 3, you can see from 12 to 4 we are going down, so you're going to need to divide again. So, put my division symbol, 4 times what gets me to 12? 4 times 3 gets me to 12, so I'm going to divide by 3 over 3. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. 1 fourth and 3 twelfths are equivalent fractions. Finally, number 4. 4 fifths equals something over 10. So I'm looking from 5 to 10. The number is going up, so I know I'm going to need to multiply. So times... Oops times something. So 5 times what gets me to 10? 5 times 2 gets me to 10, so I need to multiply by 2 over 2. 4 times 2 equals 8. 5 times 2 equals 10. 8 tenths and 4 fifths are equivalent fractions. The directions say here, find an equivalent fraction, and we know equivalent means equal. It doesn't tell me if I have to multiply. It doesn't tell me that I have to divide, so I can do whatever I want. If it doesn't tell me, I'm always going to multiply by 2 over 2, because that's the fastest way to do it. So 1 half times 2 over 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. 1 half and 2 fourths are equivalent fractions. I can do the same thing for number 6, 2 twelfths. I can multiply by 2 over 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. 12 times 2 equals 24. If you don't know that, you can use a calculator to help you figure it out. But 4 over 24, or 4 twenty-fourths, and 2 twelfths are equivalent fractions. All right, try 7, 8, and 9. Find equivalent fractions for those ones. Then pause the video while you do it on your own, then come back and check. Welcome back to check. Six tenths, if we multiply it by two over two, we get an equivalent fraction of 12 twentieths. Number eight, six eighths times two over two to get an equivalent fraction of 12 sixteenths. And number nine, eight twelfths times two over two to get an equivalent fraction of sixteen twenty-fourths. Number 10 asks us about equivalent fractions in a different kind of way. It says, is 2 fourteenths equivalent or equal to 3 sevenths? So if I'm looking at 2 fourteenths, that's like having a pizza split up into 14 pieces and two people get a piece. For 3 sevenths, that's like taking the pizza and splitting it up into 7 pieces. I can't 
compare a pizza split into 14 pieces, pieces and a pizza split up into 7 pieces to figure out which one is more. So I'm going to need to change one of my fractions into the other. So I know that I can get from 7 to 14 pretty easily by multiplying by 2. So if I take 3 sevenths and I find an equivalent fraction by multiplying it by 2 over 2, I know 3 times 2 equals 6, 7 times 2 equals 14. Now I have 6 fourteenths and 2 fourteenths. If I have a pizza and I'm getting two pieces out of 14, it's not going to be the same as having a pizza and getting six pieces out of 14. So these fractions are not equivalent. So I'm going to write on the line, no, it is not equivalent. Period. Number 11. In Mark's collection of antique bottles, half of the bottles are dark green. Write three equivalent fractions or equal fractions for one half. So I'm taking one half and I need to write three equivalent fractions. I know that the easiest way to make an equivalent fraction is to multiply by 2 over 2. So one half times 2 over 2 equals 2 over 4. There's one equivalent, of fraction, equivalent fraction. It wants me to find 3. So I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to take the one I just found, 2 fourths times 2 over 2 equals 4 over 8. Now I have two equivalent fractions. I need 3. So I can take 4 eighths, which is the same as 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half, and multiply 4 eighths by 2 over 2 to get another equivalent fraction. 4 times 2 equals 8. 8 times 2 equals 16. Now I have three equivalent fractions to 1 half. 2 fourths, 4 eighths, 8 sixteenths. I could keep going and multiply each fraction by 2 over 2. And I could get an infinite amount of equivalent fractions. That means I could just do it forever and ever. And I could keep getting equivalent fractions. There's not just three different equivalent fractions. There's a ton. Pretty cool. Number 12. Write a pair of equivalent fractions for the picture below. I know a pair means two. So this question is asking me to write two equivalent fractions or two equal fractions. And I can do it however I want. So first I'm going to need to figure out my numerator and my denominator. My denominator is how many equal parts are in the whole. So I have one, two, three, four, five equal parts. So five is going to be in my denominator. Then I get to pick what my numerator is going to be. My numerator is the part that I'm focusing on. Um, I'm deciding that I'm going to have my shaded parts be the parts that I'm focusing on. So there's one, two shaded parts. So two-fifths. I already have one fraction that's equivalent to the picture below. But I need to have two, so I just need to do one more. So two-fifths, I can just multiply by two over two to get an equivalent fraction. Two times two equals four. 5 times 2 equals 10, and now I have a pair of equivalent fractions. 2 fifths and 4 tenths are two equivalent fractions. Number 13. At the air show, one third of the airplanes were gliders. Which fraction is an equivalent fraction for one third? So if I look at my choices, I have A, 4 sixths, B, 2 twelfths, C, 4 twelfths, or D, 3 sixths. I'm noticing a problem. None of my denominators are a 3. So this is like having a whole pizza split in 3. A is like having our pizza split in 6 pieces. B and C is having my pizza split in 12 pieces. And D, again, is having my pizza split in 6 pieces. So I can't compare because my pieces aren't equal. So I need to make all of my denominators the same to find out which one is equivalent. So this is going to be a pain, 
but you can do it, and I'm going to show you how. So I have one-third. I need to see if that's equivalent to four-sixths. So I need to find out how to change three, my denominator of three, into my denominator of six. So the problems we've been doing where it said one-third equals blank over six, and we had to find the missing number here. That's all we need to do. So three times what gets me to six? Well, I can multiply three times two, and then multiply by two over two. So one times two equals two, three times two equals six. Now I can compare two six and four six are not equivalent. So now I'm going to check B, two twelfths. So again, I have one third, I have to find the missing number to get it to something over 12. So 3 to 12 is going up. So I draw my arrow going up. That means multiply. So 1 third times 3 times what equals 12? Well, 3 times 4 equals 12. So I can multiply by 4 over 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Now I'm comparing 4 twelfths to 2 twelfths. I'm looking to see if they're equivalent. They're not. So it can't be choice B. Let's look at choice C. Um, I have one third is the number I'm comparing. And I have 12 and my missing number. Now the cool thing about this is I already did that over here. So I don't need to do it again. I can just know that a 4 is going to go here. And this time I have 4 twelfths and 4 twelfths. So I know it could be C but I still have to check D just to make sure. So D is 3 6 I'm trying to find out if it's equivalent to 1 3rd. So I put in my denominator. Here's my missing number in my numerator. Um, 3 to 6 going up. I know I need to multiply. So 3 times 2 equals 6. So I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. Well, let's compare. 2, 6, 3, 6, not equal. So our final answer has to be C. Nice job. Let's talk about Missy in problem number 14. In Missy's sports card collection, three-fourths of the cards are baseball cards. In Frank's collection, eight-twelfths are baseball cards. Frank says they have the same fraction of baseball cards. Is he correct? So this problem is asking us if three-fourths and eight-twelfths are equivalent fractions. Now I can look at the denominator and see that they're not the same. The 3 fourths pizza is cut up into 4 pieces. The 8 twelfths piece is cut up into 12 pieces. So I have to make sure they're cut up in the same amount of pieces to see if they're equal. So I know that I can make 4 pieces be cut into 2. And I can do that by finding the missing number. So 3 fourths, changing it into twelfths, what number can I put here? So I look from 4 to 12, my number's going up, so I know I need to multiply. 4 times what equals 12? 4 times 3 equals 12, so I can multiply by 3 over 3. 3 times 3 equals 9, that will give me my missing number, and 4 times 3 equals 12. So 3 fourths was Missy's number, and we changed it into twelfths. So now I know 9 twelfths is Missy's number. I already knew that Frank's number was 8 twelfths, and I knew that because that's just what the problem said, Frank, 8 twelfths. Now, 9 twelfths is not the same as 8 twelfths, so I know that I don't have equivalent fractions. So going back to my question, Frank says they have the same fraction of baseball cards. Is he correct? No, comma, Frank 
is not correct because three fourths and oops and <laughs> eight twelfths are not equivalent fractions. Period. Okie dokie, now that you are an expert on equivalent fractions, it is homework time. The first thing you need to do is Daily Common Core review number 81. When you finish that, you can move on to mixed multiplication review number 21. Whatever you do not finish tonight is homework, this entire packet. Um, if you did not get to finish the video with me, you can go home and watch the video on equivalent fractions. This whole packet is your homework. When you're done with that, if you have some time, go ahead and do a round of extra math third. When you're done with extra math, you can use the rest of your math time for ST Math. Work hard. I'll see you when I get back. Bye-bye.